Well, one thing we are going to see once again is that the jungle or pool continues to be hit, but no surprises on the Rengar. The Ivor and the Cosmic's Origin same are staying before. to the same strategy. Yeah, I think we're just going to see LeBlanc banned now for Unicorns. Wait to see yep. if Camilla gets banned by Origin. If it does, you can once again ban the Malzahar and actually do exactly what you did in the last game. It's almost like you've seen this before. It's spooky. Well, I mean, like an hour ago. Yeah. This <laughs> just exact about. big a man phase happened. An there's hour there's ago. the Camille. All right. Banned on blue side. Seeing as the Jace actually gave some advantage to, to Origin in the early game, they might still first pick it. I think first picking Zyra is, is really strong as well in this patch. I think it was really solid to see Satorius on that, Jace. It was a bit of a question mark if he was going to be able to be a carry and, you know, not perfect. And he kind of committed real hard to that split push game but he still made it work for him, more or less. Now, the Malzahar is banned away by Unicorns. But again, the Jace, we talked about him being potential first pick once again for Origin, just like last time. Unicorns will love predictions. Well, if we follow the trend of the last game, this is Ryze and Jin. The reason it's Jin is because you think it might be a Jace top lane, and again, against carry tops, who doesn't build a ton of armor, going for a champion that really benefits from lethality, like Jin does, is super, super valuable. And the Rise obviously is because you can take the Rise mid against Jace, and also because Rise is considered one of the absolute best mid lane picks. Yep. So we have the exact same pick and ban so far as we had in game number one, and it's over to Origin. I mean, I Zyra vi virus here again, honestly. It might be, yeah, why not? My only concern with that 2v2 setup was that Origin didn't win the 2v2. Even when they had such a strong lane against the Bard, they didn't win that lane, and that is honestly unacceptable. So if they don't feel like they want to pick the same combo and try and like bully the lane, they might try and lock in oh. something like a tank later for Heva, where he doesn't have to try and be aggressive in lane. So here's the fun Still question the here. The Jace is a flex pick, but so is the Rumble. Yes. Is that what Wisdom would play though? That's the question. Well, uh, we haven't seen him play it so far, so we can't really guarantee it. But if you look at the last pick for Unicorns, they can take support here and ban two supports away and get a big advantage bottom lane. Like, take a Zyra, ban the MF. Problem if they do that is Heba might get a tank and it might actually benefit him. Well, Unicorns get a tank. They grab themselves you know the Zac. Predicting Unicorns will <laughs> love pick and ban faces is just impossible. Well, we had a good run at the start since it was all the same as last game, but the Unicorns have locked in that Zac now. This so was banned for last game in the second phase. So, okay, what do we have here? We have mid lane and jungle and AD carry for Unicorns. We have AD carry and double flex for Origin. So it makes it a bit hard with the next ban phase. Yeah. Because Unicorns might be banning out junglers and then Wisdom takes Rumble in the jungle and says, thank you very much, you just wasted two bans. Because maybe it was all planned from the start to have Rumble in the jungle. And that again is the power of flex picking is when they think they clinch your role, you're like, surprise, I'm actually going to play it in that role you just banned out and you wasted two bans. That's what's nice to see. See the Lee Sin's banned away once again by Unicorn, so they could turn it on and switch over to that Origin. Have one more ban before it goes back to the Unicorns for pick phase two. And we have to remember, Unicorns have first pick. So again, if you fear something like a Zyra, you can ban it here. If you just feel like, now nah, it's fine, we can play against it, no problem, then you can just leave the support open and you might go for another top lane ban. Bard ban, okay. Hillisang. Okay, so that's what they're fearing the most. It's interesting. Obviously, it was a last pick last time for Hillisang. I really don't think Bard is that strong, but it's it's a comfort pick, so it's a target ban, obviously, against Hillisang. Sure that. Said the Unicorn's inscrutable. Hard to figure out what they're going to be going for in any given situation. It really is, because again, traditionally, something like Zyra will have to get picked by now. Yep. But no one is doing it. And they're going to take the Tom Kench instead. We just... We ignore like a lot of that standard meta thing because Unicorns have very unique picks they want to play, like Zac Jungle. Mazira is locked in on the origin side. Yeah, not only that, I think they've given a lot of protection to their comp this time around. It was a little squishier before. And I said Zac Jungle, I realized it might be Zac Toppling still. There oh, is a chance, man. there is a chance that it can go to I didn't players. even think about it. Um, so by saving this last pick now here for Unicorns, they still have that flexibility. Technically, I guess Tom Kench can go top lane as well. But... Uh, Zach is very flexible. Um, but all right. Let's see what Origin's last pick is. They only have a couple seconds left. And with the no. jungle pool down there, they lock in the Hecarim. Ugh. Hecarim. He needs so much farm to be useful. To be fair, Wisdom did do pretty well in the farm game last week. True. Very, very true. But I guess 
the, the way I look at it is just like, if you're Origin, so you have a weak late game, do you, do you then try and draft late game to make up for your weakness so you have like a strong late game scaling combat that can maybe carry you through? Or do you say, no, 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 let's just keep drafting early game because that's where we're strong and we might try and snowball and see if we can win the game. I kind of like that strategy, but then Hecarim doesn't really fit in because he was obviously a jungler who needs a ton of farm. He needs to get Trinity Force. It takes a bit of time before he comes online. It's a bit of a mismatch there. See if Origin can overcome it as Unicorns. They have the Poppy locked in for last. Yeah, the thing is, by the rest of Origin, fantastic mid game. Like yeah. Strong lanes, great mid game. I mean, you can just you can just get an onslaught of shadows, and that can be enough to win you a fight when you have damage like this. Exactly. So maybe that's what Origin's banking on. And Wisdom is also late game insurance. I mean, you, we could see that happen. We can definitely see Origin have a very strong mid game again with their composition. Late game, Rise. We know he becomes a monster. Even Zack Jungle has. has Poppy's gonna get pretty, pretty hard scaling. to kill. Poppy gets really hard to kill. Like there are three tanks. And a mid lane who builds fairly tanky on this Unicorns of Love lineup for late game. But it takes some time to get there, Pyra. And that's, I feel like this mid game should be in favor of uh, Origin. Well, we'll see. They had it last time around until a few mistakes really forced their hand. Once again, we see Sheepy and Leduc shaking hands to walk off that stage. The Unicorns are banking on the later stages of the game. And they were able to come out ahead last time around. But Origin still in the hunt for that elusive first win. Very interesting top lane pick as well with the Poppy. Safe, yes, but Rumble. In Chachi's hands, it's a whole nother story, yeah, though. Yeah, obviously, the OG Poppy player, not the Origin Poppy player, just the OG in Chachi here, and his Poppy. I saved that one after I butchered it. I didn't actually save it, I just butchered the whole thing. Uh, it's okay, I'll give, you, anyway, I'll, give you, I'll give you credit for that one. Here's a Poppy top against a Rumble. That means Rumble's gonna push in the Poppy. I think that's gonna happen. We'll see how the rest of the map takes off as we load up onto Summoner's Rift for game number two in this best of three, Origin and the Unicorns of Love. It's a bait, Pyra, because there's actually a pause here ah, at the beginning. Ah, you got me. But the fans, they don't care about the pause. They are ready for this Definitely game. Ready. It's a Heva we're waiting for. He has to just reconnect. Let's see if it works. But once again, kind of throwing a lot of the traditional picks a bit out of the window in this pick and ban phase. Hecarim Jungle, not something we've seen quite a, uh, we've seen a lot of um, at all in any region, honestly. Because again, he just has that problem where he takes so much time to scale up as a jungler. And oftentimes in a standard lane meta, you want a jungler early on who at least at level six can start being like super, super impactful. But then try and yeah. pair Hecarim against like Kha'Zix and Lee Sin and Elise. Like he just loses those 1v1s. Well, I was going to say, I mean, there's a couple that they there were left up that you could have seen Wisdom taking. The Elise was uh, hovered in game number one, but totally neglected this time around and, and made it through the pick and ban. So uh, strange, unorthodox decision making, but maybe Origin have something up their sleeve this time around. It has been unicorns that have gotten the better of them before, though. Again, Origin has a fantastic mid game ready. They should win the bot lane as well with Varus and Zyra. They should win the top lane with Rumble. Mid lane, Jace has to respect the damage from Ryze, but Jace will rush a Hexstringer. And once he gets it, he shouldn't die either. And then really it's all about Xerxes on this Zack. And I'm not surprised, he's the kind of man to play Zack. No, absolutely. This guy has definitely shown up some interesting stuff in his LCS debut over the last couple of weeks. So, a lot of pings for where's the rest of Unicorns from Origin as they didn't want to make sure, or they wanted to make sure there wasn't a five man down bottom once again, but this time it is their wish granted. Wisdom and Satorius are gonna find out Xerxes. It just throws down the ward and he knows where everybody's at. So standard start and no shenanigans. Just stepping forward for the Tongue Lash, and he lands it onto the plant. Tab stood behind this time. Yeah, I think it's an important thing to highlight about Tom Kench is that if there is a tank support to pick against, like, Zyra, even against Malasahar, it is Tom Kench. Like, his Tongue Lash can instantly kill the plant. He gets a bit of uh, extra on hit damage as well when he starts auto-attacking, which also helps against these, like, plants and Voidlings when you have to kill them. Mm -hmm. And that is definitely something that is valuable. And then against Malzar, obviously you can deny his ulti completely. Zyra, not the same. And you can still walk it out. Let's see what Cirque's in. Chachi can do, but Wait, they've already that's... found Heva at level one. And all the of a sudden, there's a on the map all over the place. Wisdom's ghosted, but look at how low his health bar is. Yeah, Zerx is still tanking the blue buff. Chachi has to now get oh, out Chachi's of here. Oh, Chachi's way too low. Xerxes, he's left by himself, but he smites the blue. He flashes out. What's going on? He's going to get popped into blobs. That's first blood. Really? Unicorns of Love? That was your strategy? Oh, Wisdom's got himself some more gold. All right, I guess if you're against the Hecarim, you might as well give him first blood. Why not? He doesn't need the gold anyway, right? He doesn't benefit from that at all. 
That was such an odd. I'm not sure if I believe invade. that just happened, but it says 1-0. Because you also have time to back out, by yeah. the way, when you realize, well, okay, they're actually starting two members on blue buff. I, I mean, you saw Chachi flashing out and Xerxes continued to fight 1v2. That was strange. The problem was we missed the start of it because we were looking at the bot lane fight. Of like, what did Unicorn see when they went in? Exile taking quite a lot of damage here yeah. from the Jays. I mean, yeah, this is this is already promising to be an action-packed game. Uh, earliest first blood we've seen so far in the European LCS. And, Let's uh, see what Yehin can get done on top, or on top rather, with Chachi and Satorius. Once again, Pyro, we see long sword start from both AD carries. Happened last game as well. Does give a bit of extra potions in Lenny which is very beneficial. And both of them are rushing towards Ghost play, just like in the last game. Jin versus all the squishies. The Varus build with lethality is very, very strong. But I do feel like Blade of Rune King Rush is my favorite on the Varus. Especially against like Poppy and Zack. So we might see Taps to say, you know what, I'm using the Longsword to go into a Cutlass instead. Yep. Instead of their, the Ghost Blade and just go Blade. And, which I think is very valuable against three big tanks on the Unicorns of Love. Yeah, for Origin, they are shoving in up topside, especially with that Rumble. And we'll see if they're going to be able to do it continually on this bottom side too. Samix is dancing to try and get out of the Piercing Arrows range. And Heva throwing down some plants to try and make sure nobody's in their jungle. But they know that Xerxes is topside right now. And once again, Origin with two winning side lanes, just like last game. Something that they need to be able to use to get a bit of a gold advantage. And we will see Wisdom at level 6 start putting focus on topside. Again, much like last game. You're pushing in with a carry. Rumble is very open to ganks, which is a problem for him. But if you can actually pressure around his lane, you can start getting some damage on these turrets here. You can force dives. Does require the jungle to be around him, and we need Wisdom to get level 6 first. Well, he's on track to do it a little faster than Xerxes. How, how big is this that they got the first blood on, on Wisdom, and then Xerxes was set behind a little bit in the jungle? Oh, it's huge. Like, Zack is also scaling jungler, just like Hecarim is. So both of them can't really afford to fall behind, because they need so much gold, they need so much time to really start shining in these games here. Just getting them behind is great. Zack's way back in the game is a little bit more obvious because his ganks are very effective early on. But Hecarim level 6 can, can almost do the same. He just needs a few more levels in there. And just a reminder, same reminder a coach will always give his team. Actually, let's see the trade first. Yep, he's going to knock Exile back, who's already ghosted on Nehun. He's going to flash the wall. Instant respawn from Exile, who throws the blast plant down. Does Nehun have the damage? Oh. Not enough! As he noms the biscuit. Exile's gonna get away. Good use of the Blast Cone here from Exile, but the re reminder from every coach is when you play against Zag, is guys, remember, he can gank from so many different angles. You gotta change your warding pattern a little bit. You gotta ward him. suddenly behind certain walls so Zag can't jump over. They just pinged him right there, and that is one of the places where the ping from Origin came down, just under that little tri-push in the bot lane. That is where you need a ward against Zack, otherwise he will gank you later. That was a nice move from Hiva to try to get that vision secured up in Hillisang. Pretty low, but he's got the great health on. Samix and Tabs dueling it out, trading some damage. Pushing them back for the time being, and it still has been the farm edge for Samix. I mean, obviously it is a bit inflated by the plants, but... But again, he's 200 gold ahead of Tabs. We, have, we are like five minutes into the game, and a lane with Zyra Varos struggling against a tank support definitely is a problem for origin that they can't seem to get control in the bottom lane despite having very strong setups they're trying to push it in but it's always the danger of zach as well and they have been backing off let's take a look speaking of pushing up a top side yeah, exactly origin oh sorry uh, rumble sat can't really get as much damage on turret alone because he's a melee champion compared to jace Gets a little bit with the minions. Gank in mid lane. Yeah, no summoners this time. They knock Exile back in, and this is going to be it. Nahun claims the kill. Wisdom gave it to him on a silver platter. Two games in a row where we see this synergy between jungle and mid laner. On Origin here, whenever Exile has used his flash, they repeat gank it very, very quickly, and very good to get Jay's rolling. Jay's mid game, insane. Absolutely insane. Tons of damage. Great poke. Has exhaust. For all ins, we talked about the Hexstringer rush earlier in the game, meaning Ryze can't really kill him now in the 1v1 as easily. And this time around, nothing is gonna happen top lane. Odin Xerxes gonna pick up some farm. Well, he'll be able to clean up a little bit, but Satorius has made Chachi's life hard, and Xerxes, he had quite a lot of damage in game number one. Let's see if he can get anywhere near it this time. He's on a very different type of champion. Fun story here, Pyra. So Xerxes, last game, Second highest damage percent for jungler in the ULCS so far. 
You know who's first? Tell me, Park, come on, come on, give it to me. Mm. Who's first? Who was first? Which game did a jungler deal more damage or more percent damage than he just did in this one? More of his team's damage. Ooh, you might have me on that one. I'm gonna go ahead and just hand it back to you. It was Cirque himself. Oh, so he's second in first. Hey. Also on Rumble. He has number oh, one and number question. two. That's a trick question. That's not fair. There you go. He has both gold and silver medal. All right. Well, I guess, uh, you know, whatever you can pick yourself up. So Cirque going to be able to try and clear some vision away. Wisdom, though, is just going straight in. Once again, no summoners on exile. And just like clockwork, Wisdom cleans him up. 2-0 on the Hecarim now. Exile's having a tough lane. Hey, if you play a jungler needs a lot of gold, you know what? Just start. Picking up some of these kills, fantastic by Wisdom, and too easy, honestly. Uh, Unicorns are off, not being able to invest in proper defensive vision around the mid lane when Exile had no flash. And Wisdom just abusing it twice now. It's not really big place to highlight or call out. It's like, it's very simple ganks, but it's just well-timed by Wisdom. Well, it's working for him. It seems to be Origin's game plan right here. We talked about a solid mid game for them. They're setting themselves up well for it. Xerxes is trying to cover in mid, but Nahan is not deterred. And this is where, again, it can backfire if you play a scaling tank jungle yourself, like Xerxes is, try is trying to do on Zac here, because he fell behind due to that invade. Mm -hmm. He's been trying to catch up. He hasn't been able to gank anything. He hasn't been able to assist really anywhere on the map. He has no tracker sniper early, so there's no wards coming down from him either. Really, it's just leaving Exile alone. And saying, yeah. you have no flash, not my fault. I'm not gonna help you. I am not gonna ward for you. I'm not gonna counter gank because I'm too weak. Here you go, deal with Wisdom and Nehun. Yeah, and it's it's mistakes from Exile too. I mean, I, I said no summoners. Well, he had burned his ghost right as, the, right as the ult came in and he couldn't do much. We'll take a look at how Tabs and Samux fared last time around. Tabs did do more damage, but it was because he was able to get the protection in the mid game and get those fights off and land the chains of corruption. But in the laning phase, he still was struggling, and we're seeing it happen again. Yeah, just not able to really bully the lane and getting pressure on tower, which is something Origina should be looking for, but they have a good goal lead here. It's all around the mid lane. It's all based around Wisdom. The man we highlighted earlier in the day, together with mm -hmm. Centaurus, well, plays their week one performance. Xerxes' first gank's coming. See if he found Centaurus instantly flashing away. And Unicorns can't keep up with that one, so gank is foiled up top. Three and zero, Unicorns have been held killless in the first nine minutes of play, but that might change. Well, not just yet. Nehun punishing Exile, who just cannot get in here. And let's ignore all this boring action, Pyra, and talk about wards and, Tell and, me about and vision. some vision here. Unicorns will have to put up two control wards. If you guys look at your minimap, there's one top lane near Chachi and there's one bot lane near Samux to basically make sure Xerxes has a lot of paths he can gank from. He spotted on this one. But they're going anyway. Yeah, he's gonna flash. Ooh, another follow Nehun as soon as he's out of the room prison. We talked about this change in warding when you play against Zack. The ward being placed, that just spotted Xerxes and his gank here. Really well positioned by Origin, because you know Zack is gonna stand there behind the corner and then jump over. But again, Unicorns are trying to set up these control wards to give Xerxes a lot of ways to gank. But because Origin have been able to invade and get deep vision like this ward right here near the Grump, Xerxes will get spotted when he runs down, even if Unicorns think He's not spotted because of the control ward. Ghost on for Wisdom. He's going to get stopped up, but still charges Exile. Look at the damage onslaught of Shadows. Nehun cleans it up, and they just keep going to mid every single time. And Exile, that was your own fault. He tried to flash in that skirmish mid where they were chasing and chasing and chasing. Yeah. Of course you're gonna get ganked. I mean, this is this is throwback exile. This is what we saw in his first couple of weeks in LCS Summer 2016, where he wanted to make the big hero plays. Yeah, that was too aggressive. Some of the earlier ones was also because his jungler just can't help him right now in this matchup. And honestly, this Hecarim pick, as much as I didn't like it at first, just because of Hecarim's place in the meta, in a game like this against Zack Jungle, where you gift him first blood, it's working. And it, this Hecarim is gonna get super fat. Yeah, and really nice adaptation for Origin to keep the bottom vision spotted. Exactly, they actually are pinging the Zac. So again, the control wall being placed defensively by Unicorns to give an opening for Xerxes to jump over these walls with Slingshot. Pinged out by Origin and they just back away. Great deep vision to track the Zac and great Gangs from Wisdom so far. This has actually been a really good early game from Origin. Yeah. Well, they've had a few good early games as well, but this might be one of the best we've seen so far. The gold lead yeah. for them. 
is at about 3,000, and we're 12 minutes into this game. It looks like they keep on rolling with it. Once again, Wisdom placing that ward over the walls to spot the Zac, and it also dodges around two potential control wards, because normally you place control wards in this bush, where he just cleared one, or in the bush behind. The one near the blast cone, you guys see now the Wisdom just walked by and placed his in. This ward Wisdom placed before will not get spotted because of corners by any of those two control wards. So it's actually guaranteed to stay there and spot the Zac. Well, there's the Rune Prison. Nahun is going to have to run out, but Wisdom has got his back. Cersei has jumped in, and Hillisang is joining the party. We got a regular old skirmish in the mid lane, but Nahun, they ran out of steam on him. In comes Chachi with the windup, and he pitches Nahun out of here. Or excuse me, he pitched Wisdom as Nahun went down. Exile with the kill, and now they've got three members caught in the Strangle Thorns. Knocked Get up, there, not enough follow up. Here he goes! Onslaught of Shadows will not That's be sucked. enough. Chachi knocks him down a peg, and they are popping the blobs, but in comes Tab around the Everybody is coming to the party! Xerxes is getting a kill on Tabs, and it's Unicorns that get three for zero. Ah, Tabs flashed over the wall and missed everything. He didn't kill anyone, and then he died himself. And Wisdom, just like the Castas, he saw the big play, Pyra. He saw the four kills in front of him. It was a Zach with passive he got down, and that was it. He doesn't have enough damage yet. Man, that ended up sucking for Origin. <laughs> They just got nothing. You just gotta feel bad. They had such a great early game, and it's the gold lead's almost gone now. Ah. In order to really snowball in Forge, and they were gonna get down these side lane turrets. Observers, be my friend here after this replay. Anyway, all right, so we finally get a gang from Zach around the corner. Hillisang is here early, and Chachi is here early. So it's 4v2. TP comes in for Satorius, but Origin has taken too much damage to keep fighting. And after taking Jace down, this is where Origin sees the big plays. Great setup from Heva. Low members, but it's a Zack with passive and wisdom. Oh, he saw the montage. Sadly, he falls prey. Look at Taps! Flashing oh. over, missed everything. Exile was just out of the chain's range, and then, oh man, that hurts to watch. I agree. Unicorns got everything there. They got everything they wanted, and the gold is now a thousand different. But. If that fight had just never happened, if Origin has just tried to back out instantly, all three outer turrets, Pyra, are low. Can we just pan over all of them? Like, there's mid lane here, super low. Top lane, really low. Bot lane as well is gonna be extremely low. If they just kept laning, they would eventually, within like a minute or minute and a half, take down all three of these turrets and get a huge chunk of gold. They're still gonna get it. Yeah. But now Unicorns just got some gold in return. That they did. That's the first turret in the game. 15 minutes in. Now, Viva is caught out as he tries to clear the ward away. Teleport flying, trying to walk away from the curtain call, but he gets hit by three shots, four shots. He is oh so low, but he's under he tower. Fighting. Tabs, maybe he can find a kill here. They take down Shachi, but Heva will die as well. Supports traded as Unicorn's heavy on the bottom side. Are going to trade towers with Satorius looking up top. Satorius getting some good damage on Terry because Chachi wanted to go bot lane. They might have to trade. Actually, Exile can still go top lane and defend if he chooses to, but he might want to just move down mid and actually join a potential fight, because now... Wisdom's coming. And so is Jace. On no Slaughter Shadows, Chachi is a little bit low, but he's got the windup. Tabs is able to dodge away, but in comes Nahun. Can they finish the kill? To the skies he goes. They finish the fight with Tabs, but now the rest is on Nahun, flashing back to safety, and Samax hits him with a big bullet. Cersei not letting Wisdom off that easy, and there's no more passive, but there is a heal. Samix with a double kill, and that'll be the fight. Exile in the end was here, but didn't actually do anything at first. It was just the rest of unicorns. It was all a ruse to fish you. Bot lane fights. Exile should have moved much earlier, and he could actually have joined. And well, he's he here for cleanup duty. But anyway, that's nitpicking. Doesn't matter. The point is they're getting some kills. And now Satorius is going to get clean up on the tower. They finally get that gold, but they're going to end up trading here. And now Hillisang is looking for tabs. He gets a tongue lash. He gets an auto. Oh. He gets another. He's going Eat to him. chop him and deliver him right to Exile. Eva couldn't do anything if he tried there, and that's going to be a tower to Unicorns down by. Ah, Satorius was the only man who understood the game plan. Just take down these outer turrets, get a ton of gold, try and avoid fights. Everyone else were attacked by the Unicorns of Love. Let's see it again here. So it's bot lane, Heva getting caught out. Ends up actually going down after a little bit of the delay. Good setup with him getting some damage in return. Meanwhile, now, if Origin this does not fight here. They can actually take either mid tower or top tower. Because if Exile goes top to defend, mid tower dies. If he stays mid, top tower dies. 
but they actually want to go for that fight. Good ulti from Chachi, and now it's kind of taps and Nation on their own against two or three members from Unicorn Samux. Classic AD carry play, not getting touched by anyone, just sitting in auto, 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 auto. Like, that was a tough skirmish for Samux. He closed his eyes and just <laughs> basically waited for his crit and he got two kills. Yeah, walked the line on that one. And it looked so good for Origin with maybe at the end they could get a 3v2, but all of a sudden that just turned into a 2v2 and then Exile showed up and you're like, oh, well that didn't work out as well as we planned. We're getting close to 18 minutes and, and Unicorns, they've They've kept the gold gap at a thousand. Yeah, and this was his mid game. We were like, okay, Origin, you should get this big advantage. Like your your bot lane is strong mid game. Your mid lane is fantastic in the mid game. Your Rumble is insane in the mid game. He's got a Leandries now too, and he had it from a couple minutes ago. So he's starting to get some damage. They can still win fights, but they lost the last two by fighting outnumbered. Honestly, multiple times. Obviously, the last one was because of Charge's good ulti, but still, you ended up fighting two v three, three v four. Taps is building Ghost Blade against three tanks instead of the Blade of the Ruin King. I don't understand why that is happening. I think there's a much more efficient build for him. Lethality against people stacking armor, even if it's a scaling stat now, is meh. Because you reduce flat armor. Like, so the guy has 200 armor. Congratulations, you might reduce 20 or 25 of that. So he went from taking 65% reduced damage to 62% reduced damage. I'm just kind of making up those numbers, but that's kind of where we at with this one. Like, it's it's a really low amount. You end up actually removing in the actual damage reduction against targets with like 100 plus armor with flat armor pin. That's why you want, you know, percentage armor penetration against big tanks, or you want percent damage. Diminishing returns on the side of unicorns themselves. You know, let's talk a little bit more about some of those items because the redemption's there for Xerxes. You know, okay. we're seeing Visichachi get more and more tanky now. It's going to be harder for Origin to really evaporate those health bars as easily as it looked in the early game. You know what's going to happen, Pyro? Tell me, Officio. Is that this Zack is going to get so much HP back in buckets. He might even later on, unless he wants more armor Ooh, now. But he then wants he that ward. He will get Spirit Visage as well. Get insane HP back. He has the mastery, most likely. Get even more HP. And you're going to, like... Slowly poke him down. Oh, it was a bait! Hiva. Hiva is gonna have to flash, but they've caught him anyways. An onslaught of shadows into the back will interrupt. Samix Wisdom has got three on top of him, but he's gonna get nommed up by Hillisang. And now in the back, Hiva, Nehan trying to stay alive here. Wisdom does manage to take down Hillisang. Cersei's gonna fall, but he's got his passive on, and Chachi wants to end this fight with the Keeper's Verdict. Sends it out. And Origin have already backed away. It is a one-for-one -one trade, but it's not over yet. Satorius comes in, gets caught, gets taken down. Exile flashes, and that's going to be Heva going down. Samix takes him out, and Xerxes is looking for Tabs, who's all by himself. Wisdom, the same could be said. The Realm Warp, Cersei cleaning up. Now they find Wisdom again, and that's the ace. 20 minutes in the game. Oh, I feel bad for Wisdom. He's doing so many things correct in this game. He had great ulti into the back line but he ends up being alone. Nehun was not able to follow on the Jace here, and then suddenly you just get kited by Rise Snares and Tom Kench eats you. And you're this really strong Hecarim trying to carry. But much like last game, Pyra, Unicorns of Love takes a mid game or early late game fight, and they get the big purple worm. They're gonna make some serious use out of that Baron. It's like you said too, the redemption Gave so much health back. Let's see how it all started. They just wanted to bait Heva in. So Heva gets caught here. Wisdom dives in, but because Nehun is not here yet, no one can follow. TP also just started from Satoria. So it's it's a great Hecarim ulti, but there's no follow-up. So okay, one criticism there for Wisdom is he should have delayed it. He tried to save his support. That's why he went in early. But imagine a situation where Rumble ulti, Hecarim ulti, and a Jace are all getting to the backline at the same time. Then you can actually kill someone. That's now, a nail in the coffin, though. It is. And now you're going to get kited. Look at Wisdom coming back here. But Exile can just snare him up. You can't really get to him. He has no ulti. Yeah. And even though Wisdom is so far and so strong, if you're not there and doing it with the rest of your team, because one was TPing and one was running, 
Oh, well, they are gonna get it. Bam! And engage. Tabs is gonna be popped by Xerxes. And now the fight is on once again. This tower is so low, but the unicorns, they just don't care right now. As Chachi takes down Hima, they're looking for Nehun. Exile taking tower shots, but Satorius is down. The curtains opened up. Samix in the back. One big performance from him. And he gets another shot. The last is flashed. Oh. And that's the ace on the poppy hammer. Ah, that's the kind of kills we like to see. Unicorns are love. Getting the Baron, winning every single team fight. The mega tank comp. Running right over Origin. Oh, no kidding. Those are low health bars, but they're charging down the middle. The same with the Baron buff. They're going to be able to knock down inhibitors at 22 minutes into this one. Origin have just lost everything in the last few minutes. Yes, they have, Pyra. It is week one all over again for Origin. Yes, it is normal when you draft five new players that the parts of the game that remind you a lot of solo queue, you can play pretty well. But then when it gets to these big, big team fights and, and map movements, you're just too slow and you don't have the synergy. And Xerxe had a laser sight on tabs, jumps onto him, smites him, takes him down before this fight even begins in earnest. And look at Samix positioning. This is great. The front line, it's just so perfect. Nathan thinks he's getting out and then bam. That was a sweet fight. If you're unicorns. And now their composition. It's in the late game. You have insane tanks. The other team is not itemizing to actually kill your tanks. Tier build on virus. Lethality versus tanks. I'm against all of it. I want Blade of the Rune King. I want Hurricane. Uh oh. Disappointed Dad Deficio is back. Let's see if Origin can pull a Fnatic Deathbrush. Unicorns, they are so far ahead though. Xerxes could get caught. The chains are on. Oh, he's gonna be able to stay alive for a few seconds longer. The red carpet's thrown down. They do get a shutdown. Wisdom, now it's a 5v4. Satorius tanking curtain call shots, however. And there's the onslaught of Shadows. Wisdom trying to push them all back. Hiva, he's caught out for just a second, but he gets the strangle thorns on. The redemption's gonna come through. Chachi, can they get the kill? Samix gets the unstoppable now. Unicorns, they're just looking way too strong, and the Realm Warp is in for Satorius and Tabs. The slow march. Hillisang looking to flank Satorius. Ah, oh, Hilly. Oh, boy, the Charbroil's on. There we go. Samix with a godlike. Tabs trying to kite it out, but this is over. Tabs the last man standing, and not for very long. And there's the ace. Was well, a good try, honestly, from Origin with a little death push. Sadly for them, it was a big tank who face checked. He took some time to die, so the rest of Unicorns could just react. And they reacted to a T. So 25 minutes into this game, Unicorns are knocking down the last towers. And they haven't been perfect this series, but they're making it look good. And they will take the 2-0 over Origin. Unicorns of Love charging to the finish. Origin offering a little resistance here, but it's not enough. GG well played, Unicorns. So, game two, easier for the Unicorns of Love to win. Did get punished because they had a Zack in the jungle who gave up first blood at the enemy blue buff. Couldn't assist his mid laner whenever he had no flash. There was no vision for Exile. Exile played too aggressive. And it looked okay for Origin, but we just see a big difference in, in skill if we compare the two teams. Chibi talking about how great the Costas are right here. Definitely, that's how much what he saying. loves the Costas. I mean, good pop top for the team, and and yeah, they they made some mistakes, but against a team like Origin, you can out muscle, and they had the scaling on their side. And that's for the thing. Everything Origin did, Unicorns eventually had an answer. We'll see how that goes. Now, for more on that magical two and zero from the Unicorns of Love, let's send it back.